Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video I want to talk about the LG Wing and its camera system. How does this perform? So let's get started. So the LG Wing consists of three camera lenses, the camera setup on the back. The top one is the 12 megapixel ultra big pixel and gimbal camera so you can see that the sensor and the glass in front of it is much bigger than the rest and the one in the middle is the 64 megapixel main shooter with a largest sensor size of, of this camera with 1 over 1.7 which is the same one that it's filming me right now with the mate xs and then we have the 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera which is a bit of a different camera than this gimbal camera which is also ultra wide but the gimbal camera is used for the gimbal mode so it's cropping into the sensor and this is one of the yeah great functions of this phone if you have it in t-shape mode where you have the option to go into the camera application and then start with recording something so let me just do this right now and go into the camera system and if I'm in this T mode of course in this deep shape mode then I'm recording directly in gimbal mode and this is now the recording that you can hear and also see and the cool thing is without moving my camera I can move the picture that is taken by the camera as you can see here so I can move like this I can film those people in the background playing football the other bench and can go back here without even moving my camera so this is possible with an ultra wide angle um, camera sensor that is used on the LG wing this is also the audio quality that you can hear right now from the LG wing so this is what you can expect out of the box but of course you can plug in headphones as well to get better audio quality. The other quite interesting thing is uh, there is one sensor missing by default because it is hidden on the top and this is the front facing camera. So if I go into the camera application and hit the button you can see it is just popping up here so it's a pop up front facing 32 megapixel camera. I can take some decent shots but I don't think it has autofocusing. Does it? Or maybe it has autofocusing. It has ex auto exposure and I think I will start testing with this selfie cam to see what the output it can produce in terms of video and vlogging and maybe also photos. Let's take a photo. One, two, three. Let's see how this will look like. So this is now the front-facing camera test. Full HD, 30 frames per second. I'm walking here in the park and enjoying this great sunlight. The face exposure mode is working fine, even if I look a little bit like closing up my eyes because the sun is directly in front of me. But you can see I tested it out before. Even if I go like this, it is in a good exposure mode for my face itself. The angle of the lens, the 32 megapixel front facing camera lens is pretty good because it is pretty wide. So you only need a selfie stick for it. And then you have like the typical vlogging style uh, kind of uh, video angle. It is recording in full HD right now, but it can go up to 4K 30 frames per second. Though I think the stabilization might suffer a bit, but I will try it out. Keep in mind that First of all, I'm using the internal microphones. This is why you might hear a car in the background now. Uh, and uh, the microphone that I have plugged in is sadly not working for some reason. It doesn't like the USB Type-C adapter. So keep in mind that you are using the included USB Type-C dongle if you want to attach an external microphone. And now let's go to the 4K 30 frames per second downscale to full HD to see if we see any difference in terms of quality or stabilization. And this is now the 4K video sample, 30 frames per second. This is the maximum that this camera can do on the front, at least. So you cannot go to 4K 60 frames per second. This is not possible. But 4K 30 frames per second, this is how it looks like. And this is what you can expect in terms of stabilization. Um, the exposure, I think, is still good. I hope stabilization is also still good. What I figured out 
now is that there is no autofocus so it is having it is having auto exposure but if I have my hand here you can see it is not focusing on it and the car is passing by again and uh, yeah this is this concludes the 4k sample of the front facing camera so this is now the camera test with the 64 megapixel um, normal or main camera on the back of the LG wing and I have super steady mode enabled which records in 1080p only at full uh, at uh, 30 frames per second full HD 30 frames per second and I'm walking down the stairs here and it should be pretty stable I have this on a selfie stick and it is I think uh, yeah one of the LG knows how to do stabilization they have very good stabilization in this phone as well and it's working pretty nicely here uh, even if I'm walking down the stairs how's dynamic range the sun is in the background right now how's exposure I have to look down because stairs I don't want to fall and then trip uh, trip and fall fall and trip is also interesting uh, anyway, this is also the uh, microphone, the internal microphone. So I'm in a quieter area right now. It's a bit of slight breeze only going on, so it shouldn't be uh, too much wind noise, and you can hear me clearly. Also, maybe interesting to see what the LG microphone can pick up. There's a bird flying away, I can see right now, and how good is the camera itself. Let me switch hands here. What I want to do is uh, show you that this camera has autofocus and is pretty fast. Also, let me show you my Mate XS display here. This is what you can see on the Mate XS right now. It's a bit dim, isn't it, uh, in this sunny environment. Anyway, this is the main camera at 30 frames per second and now I will go into 4K. Remember, I'm downscaling to 1080p, so uh, keep in mind that uh, it might be not the best quality. I'm just not doing 4K videos on YouTube anymore because it's just too much th stuff to upload and I don't have the fastest internet connection for this. Anyway, let's switch to 4K. So now I'm at 4K on the main camera system and uh, it goes up to 4K 60 frames per second actually, but I'm recording with 4K 30 frames per second just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, and the sun is still in the background, so maybe I'm uh, walking backwards. How about this would be nice stabilization test. Ah, walking backwards. Uh, and the sun burning. No, uh, so how's the quality here? How's stabilization? Stabilization should be a little bit worse because I'm not in ultra steady mode right now. Just in a normal mode but as I'm walking normally just how I would walk when I'm doing my normal vlogs it shouldn't be such a big of a difference in terms of uh, yeah, stabilization things. I think the ultra stabilization mode is a super steady mode is very useful if you have some quick action that you want to film and uh, within your hands and make it as stable as possible you have to run after someone or something like this or run in general uh, I don't want to test it, test running right now with ultra stable mode because uh, why? It's it's nothing that you want to do. But usually when you have like someone uh, running towards you or running away from you or something like this, and you want to have some action shots that are a bit stabilized, you can maybe use this. Otherwise, I don't find any big usage usage out of it. So how's this, the 4K on the main camera sensor and the stabilization and uh, colors and uh, yeah, lens flare effect eventually because the sun is still in the background. Uh, just, uh, yeah, what do you think about this? Write it down in the comment section. And now we want to go to the second camera on the back, the second wide angle camera on the back, the main wide angle camera. So not the gimbal camera, not the 12 megapixel gimbal camera, but the 13 megapixel wider angle or ultra wide angle camera that is still on the back if you want to yeah, do normal recording. So now this is the ultra wide angle lens, the 13 megapixel one on the LG wing in full HD 30 frames per second. It can also record 4K, but only 30 frames per second, not 60 frames per second. And the ultra wide angle, yeah, I think it is pretty wide. The dynamic range is a bit lower and in this, yeah, contrasty situation, you can see the sun is still in the background. If I go like this, it should expose fine. Just have to look into the sun <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but in general, I think it is a good one, but not outstanding for the ultra wide angle. But it's good to have, especially if you want to do vloggings where you're not using a selfie stick, but you want to hold the device in your hands. Just 
would look like this. So it's a lot closer and uh, yeah, it could work as well, I would say. And stabilization, I think, on ultra wide angles in general are pretty, pretty awesome. So now let's back with the selfie stick here. And this is uh, the wide angle, super wide angle, ultra wide angle that you can get with uh, the LG Wings ultra wide angle camera in the normal mode. So in the horizontal location or horizontal um, mode, what, what you also have, and this is a special feature, is the gimbal camera that I want to try out right now, where you hold the camera just like a normal smartphone when you're using it. So like this. And because of the T-shape, we will see how this will look like. So uh, before that, I want to tell you also that if you're recording a video in Full HD especially or in 4K 30 frames per second, you have the ability to switch between different camera sensors. And this is what I want to show you right now. So now I'm in this ultra wide angle lens and you can see there's something moving there. So let's go to one times and maybe you can still see it there. I can go in and can even zoom further in. Up to 10 times there was a little bunny running around but you can see that there's a dog coming so the bunnies were hiding. But this is possible live during recording in full HD. So now I'm recording in gimbal mode. So I'm holding my phone in portrait orientation, just like this. And because it's in a T shape, I can simply, yeah, record something. Let's, let's do a little inception video in a video where I can show how I'm holding this video here to record myself. This is how it looks like. And uh, yeah. It is pretty awesome, I would say, to hold it like this. But this is, I think, mainly not for vlogging, even though you can run around with this pretty awesome uh, Lee and it will still stabilize as well and probably has one of the best stabilization because of this large sensor where it crops in. But uh, it is meant for another view, just like this, where I show you something like this and go from left to right and it's very very smooth just like a gimbal would be and this is the first person view that i'm using right now but i also have some other locks and uh, rotations that i can use just like on a gimbal itself so i have also the possibility of course to go up and down if i want to show you the sky a little bit more i can go up like this in a very smooth pan without moving the camera itself and i can go down as well i can make it fast or quick depending on or how uh, I hold it on my, um, uh, hold it with my finger, and do do it with my finger here. You can see the controls, so I can simply go up and down, just the way I want it to be, by using this virtual joystick here, which is pretty nicely done. So in pen follow mode I have the option to do something like this. So I twist the phone now, but you can still see it is staying horizontal. So I have this option where it keeps the uh, horizontal kind of space, which is pretty awesome I think. So you have really the option of a gimbal here. And uh, yeah, this is pretty nice as well. And of course I also have the option to use effects like this one here where I hold the lock button, I move the phone already and then I can let go of the lock button to have a nice pan or twist around. And you can use this of course for creative effects if you want to do this. And uh, I'm pretty, pretty much uh, running very fast here and you can see that the stabilization is keeping up which is also pretty nice and this is one of the best features of this phone. There's so much creative, um, yeah, stuffs that you can do with this phone that it's fascinating if you had ever had a gimbal this is yeah one of the interesting most interesting kind of things that you can do and uh, this is only video recording but of course what you can also do is time lapse and some other things that might be pretty interesting moving time lapse even with the gimbal mode and then there is this dual video recording where I'm using the front video camera and the gimbal camera to record something. Uh, one thing that I li don't like so much is that I have to 
hold it a little bit down and you can see that the exposure and the high dynamic range on the gimbal camera is much better than on the selfie shooter and uh, yeah this is I think one of the issues that I see here but in general I think it is a pretty nice and interesting idea to have something like this and if you want to have some more video samples you can watch my Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro review because most of the b-roll like 90% of the b-roll was filmed with the LG wing in some shots you can see it because in darker situations especially the uh, gimbal camera is not so good because the sensor is a little bit smaller so you get like graining and noise pretty fast in darker situations but if you're running around outside like I'm here right now it is I think pretty awesome and pretty good to have such a nice camera where you can see the front and back at the same time and you're holding it normally like a normal device and it's pretty much good stabilized and I think also the uh, front facing camera is still good stabilized in comparison to the Redmi Note 10 Pro that also has a dual video recording function. So uh, what do you think about this? Write it down in the comment section. One thing that I found out is that the ultra steady mode is only working with the main camera sensor so you cannot use this super wide angle with the ultra steady mode. Uh, what I want to do right now is show you a little bit the user interface of the LG Wing and show you one of the best features of the LG Wing which is the manual mode where you have the option to play around with lots and lots of settings and things and I think it's one of the best feature of this device especially for video makers if you want to create a nice good looking shot using the manual mode. So this is the LG camera app, one of the most advanced camera apps. You have the usual filters here that you can set for uh, photos, you have the aspect ratio that you can set up and the cool thing is you have, if you have it in portrait mode, you can just simply swipe down to get to the uh, items here as well, which is pretty nice. So it is also easy to reach those options. You don't have to grab them on the top. You can just swipe down. But in this uh, normal landscape mode, this is how you would access them. You have some options as well here, like uh, the composition tips and the photo size, HDR, save as uh, HEIF format, live photo, tracking, uh, setting or showing a grid, cheese and watermarks and scan QR codes. Then we have the uh, night view here, we have a video mode where I have the super stabilizer here and we have the option to go up to 4K 60 frames per seconds. So these are nice little options. Time lapse is here as well, as well as a portrait mode. And I can show you some of the portraits that I took in this different options like blur, 3D photo effect, uh, what is it? Cartoon background and sketch background and so on and so on and so on. So there are very nice photos that you can take in those uh, in this mode and you can set the blur intensity here. It's not using f-stop numbers but a depth um, number for this. But this is not the highlight. I think the highlight of uh, this uh, is the also not the stickers i will show you stickers um, later but the, under more you have the manual video and you have the manual camera mode so let's go to the manual video mode here you can set up everything that you want i have this little setup here as you can see with the various different items and uh, the car is now in focus and i have my manual video slider here i can set it to auto if i want to but i can also slide and you can see this focus speaking uh, option here which allows me to see in green that this is now in focus my salamander is now in focus if i want this little pick in, in focus i just slide a bit until i see the green highlight color on this little pick and if i want to go back to the car i can slide until the car's highlight color is also a bit of greenish and then i have the option to set my uh, 
focus this way. I can set also the exposure compensation. I can set the ISO manually or even the shutter speed. So if I want to have this smooth motion blur, cinematic motion blur, I set it to 150 here. And the same goes for the colors. I can make it a bit warmer, the Kelvin numbers here, or I can make it a bit cooler as well. If I want to set up my audio, I can go to the Hi-Fi in this case, because under options here, I have the option to set high quality recording, the bit rate I can set for the video. And for the audio, I have the Hi-Fi recording option here as well that I turned on by default, it is disabled. So this is also a very interesting and nice option. And then under the Hi-Fi button, you can set up the, uh, see the uh, voice meter here, the recording levels. You can set the gain a bit higher. So you can see that this is now better. Uh, resolving my voice. I have a low cut filter and a limiter here as well as a wind filter uh, that I can enable if I have some wind noises. So I don't need necessarily an external microphone and you can see it in my recordings as well that this is not necessary. So this is one of the highlights. Otherwise I have under more even more option and I can even download more stuff. I have the customization option that allows me if I don't need night view so often I can just drag it out here and have it under more and not in this carousel uh, for choosing the various different modes. So this is in a short overview the software application uh, for taking photos or videos with professional modes and easy modes for beginners. I think this is one of the most complete camera application right now on the market. And this is only the landscape mode. What happens if I open up the device? So as soon as I open up the device, the camera mode switches to gimbal mode. So I only have the possibility to use now the uh, gimbal camera at the back. And I have the gimbal mode here. You can see the settings that I have here. I can uh, choose to go left or right, just like on a normal gimbal, and it will then go left or right digitally and because it is a cropped sensor it will just move around. I have the first person view, I have a follow mode that follows me very smoothly left and right and I have the pan follow mode. Then I have a lock button so if I have the lock button pressed I can pan or tilt the device a little bit. It tries to stay at the same level. Then I have of course the calibrate option which will then set everything back to a default. I can switch between HD and full HD resolution here. There's no 4K on the gimbal mode. I have a time lapse option here where I can turn on the extra steady cam option or not. You can see it crops in heavily. If I don't have it on, it is like this, the view field. And if I click here, it's heavily cropped in. I have a slow-mo option here as well where I can choose to have like the whole video being slow motion or only part slow motion. If I have the whole video being slow motion, I can choose which part of it later on is slow motion. I have dual recording here. You can see that the front facing camera is then coming out of its housing and uh, allowing me to do record. So this is the user interface for the gimbal mode. So one of the good things here in the manual video mode is that you have manual focus pull with focus peaking. So now the background is in focus. Now I go a bit down and then I pull in the flowers into focus. And because I have focus peaking, I can clearly see that they are now in focus, which is pretty awesome, I think. So you have the option to do nice focus pulls manually with focus peaking option if you don't want to trust the automatic focusing. Of course, I can also raise the gain of the microphone in the manual mode where I have the gain controls. I can go up and then you can hear me more clear and I don't have to edit this in post, which is pretty nice. And this does not only work with the integrated microphone, but also with external microphones that you plug in. And when you are in video mode, you can of course set the manual ISO and manual shutter speed for a nice uh, motion blur. And uh, you need an ND filter because the aperture is so large in brighter conditions. This is why I'm on, in this darker condition here right now, so you can see me clearly. So you can pretty much do cinematic videos with this as well. You just need a clip-on ND filter. 
and you can even record videos in AR sticker mode where you can see this little hamburger that says hi folks and I can go closer to it uh, as you can see here and can yeah look at it it's pretty nicely done I think yeah very nice idea from LG and if you think that vlogging is too boring with the default mode you can go to AR stickers in the selfie mode and then you can record yourself as the Easter Bunny no, Easter is over yet but yeah, maybe I'm hiding <laughs> and there's also tracking mode so I can track this device even if I go closer or further back it will track this which is also a pretty nice feature as Especially if you want to track like fast moving subjects or something like this in video mode or of course also in photo mode. So let's take a look at some photos. First of all the various different uh, camera shots in daylight conditions where you can see the natural background blur that the big main sensor 64 megapixel main sensor can produce. You can see here wonderful sharp image of this flower and the background gets this natural blur so i took this uh, as a close-up shot without any bokeh effect extra added to the shot the same goes for this gamepad you can see the colors are nice and if i zoom in you can see even this little uh, details here like this little dust uh, that is on the device itself so you can see i can zoom in pretty far here and I can see also the natural back background blur. You can see it was focusing on here. And if I go to the buttons, it gets blurrier and blurrier. So the large sensor is working fine. And I really like it. It's just like on all my Huawei smartphones, all the newer Sony smartphones, they also have this uh, kind of sensor. Then the ultra wide, you can see the ultra wide is pretty wide here. It can get pretty wide. You can uh, get a nice shot and it has slightly also here it should be completely overblown actually the sky here but you can see some tints of blue here some hints of blue so it is good also in dynamic range i would say the ultra wide angle the only thing i'm missing on the ultra wide angle is um focusing option so it is not having any autofocus which is a bit of a bummer for such a flagship device then we can see the different photo lengths here's the one time option of the 64 megapixel camera you can zoom in pretty far here you can see this little uh, air refreshener or air humidifier uh, and you can read even the buttons in here and the time or the timer that you can set then you can zoom in two times which is basically cropping into the sensor as it is a 64 megapixel sensor this can be done without any like digital cropping or uh, let's say not digital cropping let's say digital zooming so it's not losing any uh, kind of detail you can see here if i go in here the buttons and the uh, markings for the uh, timer are as sharp as they were before so it's just, just a digital crop and yeah it works pretty fine and good and as it is only a digital crop you can smoothly zoom in two times and even beyond two times if you want to but i think more than two times doesn't make sense because it's then really digital uh, digital zooming uh, what it applies then and not cropping into the sensor itself then the ultra wide angle you can see a lot more of this little table and you can see even the uh, cables dangling around that i didn't want to show you uh, there i have an hdmi cable and here's some power cord cables that go up to a projector that is uh yeah there and you have some other things here that you can see so the details are pretty good i think the noise is also good in this yeah ultra wide angle shot uh it looks good but on onto the sides you can see of course the detail is lost the noise is creeping in especially on the black you can see it here and the distortion is there as well you can see it here on the box of the galaxy s10e uh that yeah it's pretty uh bad so but it's a typical ultra wide angle camera shot so let's go to the night photos and we can see that 
mainly shot with the main camera lens because of the biggest sensor and the other ones don't make so much sense because if they show noise already in daylight then they will be much worse in, in the nighttime so i only used the default camera application used some nighttime shots here and you can see they're sharp they're good uh, they, such a large sensor and then with nighttime it is good you can see some noise here creeping in of course because it was very dark here there's only this one lamp uh, lamp post here uh, lamp that is shining in the street and uh, the white car you can even read what is written on the car these the big bigger uh, letters are readable here i think it's getting a bit harder to read already but this is i think the resolution in general and then here another view on a street with a bit more lamp and you can see lamps you can see that the lamps are a bit overexposed and you can see noise creeping in um, it's not the best night vision or night mode that i saw so far you can see here the details are also lost in the background but here in the foreground you can see the clearly the the car it's also not very sharp so um the night mode i think it is working it is not as bad as i would say um, Sony's night mode is because Sony's night mode is pretty bad I would say uh, in terms of um, uh, overdoing it uh, I think it is not overdoing it's not like a Huawei that is uh, yeah, producing from a nighttime uh, daylight picture basically it is it is trying the Sony route where it tries to be natural it has a bit more uh, noise creeping in than I have on my Sony devices, for example, Xperia 1 Mark II or 5 Mark II. So this is, I think, one of the not so good things. And I think the, the highlights are a bit overblown sometimes. And you can see the shutter speed is a bit slow. This person here is not sharp at all. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. I don't like the LG night mode. Um, I have to say, after I saw it here on, on the phone itself, but when I'm doing night shots, the somehow the, the, the display of the LG Wing is so bright that I really like was astonished that it's doing a pretty good job, actually. But uh, yeah, looking and comparing it also with other devices, it is not the best. You can see here also nothing is readable on this uh, electronic um, display that shows the trains coming and coming and so on. And this is pretty bad, I would say. So... I don't like this night mode, I have to say. It is uh, not the best. It tries to be natural, but it's overblown highlights uh, all over the place. And it's lifting some shadows. But honestly, maybe it's even better to just have the normal shot without night mode in this situation where it's not too dark because then you get better shots, I think. And yeah, that is basically everything for this little overview of the photos of the LG Wing that you can shoot with the LG Wing. So that's it for my camera review of the LG Wing with the W. <laughs> uh, anyway, focusing, I think hopefully it's working. Uh, that's the main camera that I'm using right now. Sometimes it misses focus, but I like the main camera the most. The gimbal mode is very nice in daylight but it falls apart in darker conditions indoors and the ultra wide angle yeah it's okay but not a flagship worthy of 2021 it is a flagship of 2020 so it is okay-ish but LG never nailed the hardware perfectly so they innovated a lot of stuff in camera market they have a very good camera software as you saw and I think I like the cameras of the LG especially also with the audio features and all the other gimmicks that you have and especially the manual mode in video with focus speaking is so cool so nice that I really wish that Sony and other developers uh, Xiaomi Huawei would um, yeah copy this simply so that we have a nice uh, professional video mode there as well that works as nice as on the LG. That's everything for my LG Wing camera review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.